for his great name. Surely goodness, surely mercy, right beside me, oh my days, and I will dwell in your house I have trusted in you, O Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Search my heart and affections, Lord, your loving kindness before my Wash my hands with your innocence, Lord. I fall at your altar, and I'll sing with thanksgiving 
to the Good evening. Welcome to the celebration of the Mass for the third Sunday of Lent. At this time, we ask that you please turn off all cell phones and electronic devices. 
As a Eucharistic-centered community, all of our actions flow out of our love for the sacrament. Out of reverence for the Eucharist and out of respect for each other, we kindly ask that you remain in the pew until the Mass is completed and the celebrant has processed out of the church. The scripture readings for today's Mass can be found on page 77 in your hymnal. The order of the Mass with the congregation's responses can be found on your pew card or on page 3 of your hymnal. Our opening hymn is number 130 in your hymnal, From the Depths We Cry to Thee, number 130. Our priest celebrant today is Father Rocky. Please stand and join in our opening hymn. Good afternoon, everyone. And we say hello to the people at home. Wave to the people at home. Look behind you. There you go. <laughs> and so let's pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to receive Jesus in the Word of God and in the Blessed Sacrament, let us examine our conscience and pray for God's mercy to heal us of any sins we may have committed. You bring light to those who are in darkness. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. You raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness. And we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever leave us, make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. 
strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massah and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is, If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. to the Lord, hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence giving thanks. Let us hail him with a song of praise. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your heart. Let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God and we the people. The people of his pasture, the flock of his hand. If today you hear his voice, pardon Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, pardon not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massah in the desert, when your forebears put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my word. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand and we boast in hope of the glory of God and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us for Christ while we were still hopeless died at the appointed time for the ungodly indeed only with difficulty does one die for a just person though perhaps for a good person, one might find the courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for our sins. The word of the Lord. Praise 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and cistern is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than the father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flock? Jesus answered, and he said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to Jesus, Sir, give me this water so I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain. But you people say that the place of worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, and indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When He comes, He will tell us everything. Jesus then said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking with you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them. And he stayed there for two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard our, for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. 
most of us can identify with the Samaritan woman, that life can become unfair many times and unjust, that life can become like drinking stale water. It becomes a very tiring experience. And some people say, that's the way it's always been, so let's just do it that way. Resign to the fact that our water has always been stale and stagnant water. There's really nothing more we can do about that. That's how it's always been. But Jesus has come to the world to reveal to us God's magnificence, God's love, God's riches that he wants to pour out onto us. And that's why Jesus said, if you only knew the gift of God. Instead of cynical about life, Jesus wants us to see that he is always with us, even though we are not always with him. And that he is willing to bring us to a better life than what we already have now. And he wants us also to give, to receive a good life so that we can help others to have a good life too, the people that we see around us. Who here believes that with the help of God, you can have a better life? than what you have now. Raise your hand. Okay, about less than half of you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if there is no God, think about it. If there is no God, we would have no rules to live by. We could do whatever we wanted including sinning. There wouldn't be anything that tells us why it's better to do the good things than the bad things. We would forget about the good things. We would just do what we feel like doing. And usually the things that we feel like doing is a sin. Think about that, a life of no rules. We just do what we want to do. Do you think it would be a better world? Yes or no? Okay. So that's why it's important to have God with us. God wants to give us the good things of life, teach us good and bad, so that we can help others with the same in their life. Remember the coronavirus pandemic about three years ago when everything was shut down, right? You remember that? Okay. Seemed like a very bad situation, right? Everybody was scared. Nobody really, most people didn't know what was going on and why we were doing the things like shutting down. We were even forced to be with our family members, right? At home. You remember that? And you're laughing because I know what you're thinking, right? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm laughing too because I got stuck with the other priest. Oh no, <laughs> Father Jim is going to see this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's being live streamed, you see. So, so um, they know what I'm saying. They felt it too, you know. So, but if you look back at it, it's really a good thing that we got stuck at home with our family members. Why? For me personally, I was new here at St. Ignatius when uh, I came in at the summer of 2019. And... Uh, pandemic, the shutdown happened like at the spring of 2020. And so we were all so busy, the priests, that I didn't even know them well. I lived with the priests that I didn't even know. 
And I was busy with the hospital too, you know, and helping in the parishes. So I would only see them when it's time to eat, dinner. And the good thing with the shutdown was that I got to know them. I saw them, I was forced to eat more than just dinner with them. You know, I was able to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner with Father Mark. And you know Father Mark, right? Yes, and that's quite an experience, to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner with <laughs> Father Mark. <laughs> Hi, Father Mark, if you ever see this. And the good thing is I got to know the priests and the seminarians at that time that were living with us. And that wouldn't have happened if the pandemic did not force us to shut down. Do you feel that way about your family members? You got to know them. I heard your confessions, and you know, some of you said, Father, forgive me, my family, I hate my family members. <laughs> <laughs> but, but didn't some of you experience something good out of it, though, with your family? Who here, looking back at it, experienced something good with your family members? <laughs> Even less than half. <laughs> okay, but think about it. You got to know your family members better for good or for bad, right? And the good thing is we became closer to them. We got to know their good sides and their bad sides. Believe you me, I got to know the priest's good sides and bad sides too, you know, right? It begins with the conversation, right? You talk to the people while you're in the kitchen or in the dining room, whatever you're doing with them. And that's how it happens. Who here would like to become closer to your family members? Raise your hand. Not that much of you want to be closer to your family? No, seriously, who here, don't be afraid, who here wants to be closer to your family members? Raise your hand. Okay, less than half of you do, that's amazing. And that's, I think, is the problem of this world. People don't want to be with one another. It begins with the family, you know, the problems of this world. You see, if each of us would be better with the people we live with, with those we associate with, they in turn would be better when going out in the community. Because what we do to each other at home goes out to the community too. Our family members end up doing it to the other people. I hear it in confession a lot. When people say, I did this, and I would ask, where did you learn that? They would say, from my parents or from my people I live with. And so, if we would only be better to our family members, the world would be better because it starts at home. The home is the domestic church. And so, stay close to God. And didn't Jesus say, whatever you do to your brothers and sisters, you're doing it to me? So not wanting to be close to your brothers and sisters, to your parents, to your children, to your spouse, you're doing it to God. Jesus went on to say, if you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, give me a drink. Jesus is thirsty. Jesus sought each one of us. He seeks each one of us because he wants his thirst to be satisfied. And the Holy Spirit of God has brought us into this church this afternoon because Christ wants us to be with him. He wants to meet with each one of us. And that is Jesus' thirst. He yearns 
to be with us deep in his sacred heart until he is with us and with God the Father is with us in heaven. Again, God the Father wants to share all the goodness of his grace of heaven to us. The justice we are all looking for, the peace, the unity, the love, all can be found in heaven. But they, God wants to start giving them to us here on earth, beginning at home. Jesus continues, if you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, give me a drink, then you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Who here again wants to have a better life? Raise your hand. Don't be afraid, you're in church, okay? That desire for a better life, life-giving water to drink from instead of that stale water of life, you have that in you because God placed that in you. Remember, God places himself in you when he created you. God created you in his image. And so our thirst for goodness, for love, for truth, for honesty, for unity, comes from God's thirst for the same thing. And God wants the same thing from us. That's why he wants us to be with him. And that's why Jesus died on the cross for every person that God created. Not just those of us here in this church, but for every person that's not even in church right now. Christ died for all sinners. Not just the churchgoers. That's how much God yearns for all of us that he has created. He allowed Jesus to die for everyone. Do you know anybody else who was willing to die for you? You see, listen to what the Pope said, Pope Francis. The Lord Jesus gave voice to the divine suffering when ungrateful mankind abandoned his love on the cross. It seems as if the Lord is also speaking these words today. They have forsaken me. For my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. And so the Pope continues to say, it is the tragedy of love not requited, a tragedy that unfolded when in response to Jesus' thirst for man, man offers him vinegar and spoiled wine. God is thirsting for us. And that's why he forgives us over and over again so that we would be able to know the goodness that God wants us to experience and spread it around us. As we heard in the second reading, God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so as we enter more intensely into the coming weeks of Easter, we recognize that there is a longing in our heart for goodness, for everything that is good, a thirst that comes from God's thirst for us. God is good. God is love. God is truth. God is everything that's good we can imagine. And God thirsts for us to have what he has, to be who he is. And that's why Jesus continues to say in the gospel reading today, whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. 
the water I shall give will become in him the spring of water, welling up to eternal life. And so, to prepare ourselves to receive Jesus in the Word of God in the Blessed Sacrament in a few minutes, we pray that the Samaritan woman's response to Jesus in the Gospel will also be ours. Sir, give me this water so I may not be thirsty. Please stand, and together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, God from life, true God from true God, begotten, not me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him, all things for me, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son, and the Lord, and the Lord, and the Lord, and the Father. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I ask for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Confident in the Lord's goodness to us, let us bring our prayers before Him, and we make our response, Lord, hear our prayer. Poor Pope Francis, may God grant him good health and continued wisdom as he leads the church on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public officials, may God's grace enable them in using their talents for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. For our young people who will be confirmed on Wednesday this week, and that the Holy Spirit may continue to guide them throughout their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our beloved dead, especially Henry Kudan, Peter Bruno, and Sandy Gold, that seeing the face of God, they may live in everlasting joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our personal needs and those listed in our parish attention books. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And together let us ask the angels to help us to be more open to receiving the goodness, the love, the unity, the peace that God wants to bring to this world. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our, be our protection against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God, May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. pray. And do thou, Prince, Prince of the Heavenly Host, host by, by the power of God, God cast into hell, hell Satan, Satan, and all, all the, the evil spirits who prowl about, about the world, seeking, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Heavenly Father, please hear our prayers this day and answer them according to your wisdom through Jesus Christ, your Son who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn for the preparation of the gifts can be found at number 462 in your hymnal. I heard the voice of Jesus say, number 462.
Please stand and pray as brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that those who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith, that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of 
Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer to you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, with all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Ignatius, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us give ourselves to God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Please stand and let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still here on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have just a couple of announcements. The poor boxes this weekend are designated for Anna's house to assist the homeless women and children in Hartford County. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. This is the last weekend for the Easter gift card poor box. We thank you for continuing to help. Our summer vacation Bible school program registration is now open, so please visit our website or the bulletin for more details. Next weekend, the Knights of Columbus will have a truck in front of the church collecting canned foods for the sharing table soup kitchen in Edgewood. For more information and the list of items to bring, please see the bulletin. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commandments. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 121. Again, we keep this solemn fast. Number 121.